Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy Not Having It in the Game Caviar Studio. I'm bringing you some Saints Row the Third uh, Horde gameplay. Horde, as in W H O R E D. I think that's spelled correctly. Horde. And this is the first time I'm playing this, and this gameplay is actually pretty fun. Um, I, I really could play this instead of playing the, the single player. I played this for like 30 minutes straight. I had to force myself to not play this anymore because I needed to make this video. I hadn't made a couple of videos in a, a few days. Well, I made some videos, but they went unlisted because um, I was trying to uh, submit them to Yausha Recruiting. Uh, that so far, that hasn't worked out, but I still have my fingers crossed. Anyway, to be successful in this game play mode, this game mode, you have to stay mobile. You have to keep moving. I figured out that, I mean, fairly quickly. It's, uh, first off, this isn't a hard game mode. Just like this game in general, it focuses around fun and, and uh, customization. This gameplay is no different than the single player campaign, whereas it's fun, kind of challenging at times, but for the most part, you have a great time playing it. And as you can see, I stay mobile, I move around, uh, I switch up guns here every now and again. They give you a weapon, but that's not exactly the weapon that you're stuck with. I think on some modes it is. This was kind of hard with these big Amazonian women with two of them had riot shields. And this was kind of hard. They took a lot of damage, especially um, from the submachine gun because it, it shoots fast, but it doesn't really do that much damage. Um, in this game mode, headshots, headshots, headshots are key because they do the most damage to the body, of course. Um, except for when you do the zombies. Now, there's a level, and I believe it's in this video, I think it is, I hope it is, uh, where I fight off a, a horde of zombies with a chainsaw. And that was absolutely amazing. It was fun. And I would do that all, like, every time I play. I just would play that level in, in different situations, different um, areas. This is in a casino of some sort. And um, it's uh, it's pretty dilapidated and, um, and tore up. But still, it makes perfect, it's a perfect scene for this type of game mode and for this game. Um, I'm playing as a guy named The Gimp. It's, it, you know, this game does not have any type of barriers towards uh, sexual orientation. They don't care. And when I first did my review of this game, one of the things that I said was this game is different than Grand Theft Auto, whereas Grand Theft Auto has gone stricter and more realistic in its gameplay, which isn't a bad thing. But Saints Row the Third, Saints Row in general, has stuck to its roots and has gone and have kept the fun factor along with a hint of Grand Theft Auto. Um, as you can see, I'm running around. I'm, I'm getting a lot of ammunition. It helps to have ammunition, uh, and that's for obvious reasons. You don't want to run out of bullets when you have a group of people chasing after you, trying to kill you. That's the last thing you want to do. I uh, throw a grenade every, every once in a while, and that helps best when everybody is grouped together maybe if they're coming up a stairwell or maybe when they first enter into the main room of the casino you can get lucky and toss a grenade and you could take out a lot of people which helps on your time and your score and more importantly it helps you kill a lot of people so you can live the main object of this game mode is to live plain and simple that's it you survive by any means necessary they give you some really weird weapons um, but they work out well. I've had the submachine gun. I've had an assault rifle. I've used the shotgun and had the uh, the dragon shells in it. The ones that when you hit something they explode. Those work well. Uh, let me see. I've had some weird laser weapon type deal that shot out like a pulse that killed little mini zombies. Um, this is fun. This is really fun. I'm gonna get back to playing this later on. My intention was to uh, do a gameplay video of a mission in the single player mode. Well, I, I, I started up the uh, at the title screen and I saw horde mode and I remember hearing about it, but I never actually um, played it before. And I was like, let me go ahead and get give it a shot. And I'm glad I did because it's absolutely fun. So on to the channel. Uh, we are in preparation of trying to get our channel partnered. 
um a lot of people have said that it's hard to do that with gameplay videos i did some research and there are ways that you can do you can do a gameplay video and still be partnered and still make money off your videos but you have to have you have to follow strict guidelines now i'm going to try to do this with this video hopefully it works out i've watched videos on youtube of other people who who have done gameplay videos and have it set up to where they can make money you know when they put the ads on the videos and you actually make money off of that and i'm gonna follow that strict protocol uh you have to basically declare that your video is of instructional use and that it's covered under the uh what is it the fair use act or something i i don't know um uh it, if you if you actually read youtube there's a lot of helpful articles about this within youtube that actually tells you what to do and um how to prosper in your channel and uh actually how to succeed in doing uh being partnered while making gameplay videos so fingers crossed hopefully we make it i don't i don't foresee us having that much of an issue with it uh, uh we're gonna still uh do vlogs and upcoming this weekend we're gonna be doing uh, we're gonna be covering the vita launch i believe it's a midnight launch so hopefully i'm gonna be able to get in on that i would do a vlog of me uh unboxing the vita and going through the steps and basically running it uh, trying it out i was in eb games the other day because i just uh pre-ordered one and i played along with it played with it a little bit um i played the uncharted golden abyss and that game looks amazing it plays amazing i was kind of worried about the two analog sticks but it doesn't really it, it was something i was what i was worried about was the analog sticks are so small that i i thought that i was going to have some sort of issue with it but i didn't the the controls were uh spot on they were on point and everything so be on the lookout for that uh look us up on yeah, blog talk radio on facebook uh this video is over i'm not having it in the game caviar studios and i'm out oh and like comment subscribe spread the word